Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Uh, if you're new to my channel, my name's Kenny. I am a hillbilly and I work on RVs. Uh, we're gonna start rolling this one today. It's gonna get a new rubber roof. Uh, the roof's got several soft spots in it. Uh, this is also the uh, same camper that we replaced the, uh, the paneling in the front wall on the inside of. Uh, so you may recognize that. Probably not because now you're looking at the outside. So. Yeah, this is not going to be a step-by-step how-to video on how to put a rubber roof on. Uh, I'll probably video most of the process, but it will probably, probably most of it will just get um, fast-forwarded, put some music on, and uh, you know, see see how it happens. But it's not going to be a step-by-step. -step. Important steps, I you know, I may cut in, you know, tell you what I'm doing, how I'm going to do it, and uh, but for the most part. Um, we're just going to get this thing done and uh, not not try and do a step-by-step -step video. And actually today, uh, probably all I'm going to do is try and get the rubber off. Uh, I'll get everything. I may not even take everything off the top. Um, I may just go up and pull the rubber off, see what's soft, uh, get the rotten wood cut out, and let that dry. Because it looks like we're going to have some really nice dry weather here for the next 7, 10 days or so. Uh, it's not going to be very warm uh, till next week, but uh, I would like to get the uh, get the rubber off, uh, get the rotten wood cut out, and let things dry, and then uh, we'll start going back. So um, this is not how I would typically do on these roofs. If you want to see how a real professional does a rubber roof, go check out AZ Experts' uh, YouTube channel. Dude is like a roof specialist. Um, he, he does a really good job on roofs, and typically. You know, when he's doing a roof, he would change all the wood up there. Uh, we're not going to do that unless we pull that rubber back and it's all bad. But I think we got about three major soft spots that we'll be just putting, uh, cutting out the rotten wood and putting back. Um, I think his jobs, he must, he must have a whole lot more budget to work with than, than most of my jobs. So we're just going to patch this up. Um, you know, I've got a way to do it. It turns out really well and does a fantastic job. So, uh, so anyhow, um, that's enough talking. We'll go get started, and uh, y'all come on, and uh, we'll 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 see what I get done today. Now, this is not going to be how I would typically do uh, this rubber roof. I mean, typically I would just go on, you know, get my get all my trim off all four sides, front and back. Uh, and, and the sides, the, the rail on the, the gutter on the sides, um, and get everything off the roof, and then I would start pulling the rubber. But uh, just because the way I'm doing this, I've only got a small window today, um, and it's gonna get cold for the next couple days, so all I wanna do is get find, find out what is soft, and uh, get enough rubber off where I can get the rotten wood out, and uh, that's probably gonna be it for today. Um, so even if I was going to take the whole rubber roof off, I would still split this rubber so you're only pulling, you know, pulling the rubber off of, you know, a strip about this wide. Because um, where this rubber's still stuck to the wood really well, it's stuck very well. But where it's rotten, it's not. So, so yeah, we're just going to uh, go get started here and uh, start pulling this, uh, pulling this rubber up. We're just going to probably just cut around things for right now until we see what's soft. And uh, yeah, so. Hey, we're gonna get started, so here we go. Got a brand new blade in my, well, it's not brand new, but it's sharp in my trusty knife. Here we go.
Tell you what, this roof wasn't very solid the day they built it. It's only got quarter inch lou on, on the, uh, as a roofing material. It does have steel rafters, which is pretty uncommon. I don't know that I've ever seen steel rafters in one. Uh, but yeah, it's just quarter inch lou on on this deck. So uh, we're gonna have to get something to walk on because man, you gotta, yeah, you really need to be careful and step on the rafters and don't step between them. <laughs> so yeah, it's no wonder this thing has got so many rotten spots because of just quarter inch lou on. I mean, holy crap, just a few drops of water in there and boom, you got a big soft spot. So um, I'm gonna cut this camera off right now and uh, once I get some more of this roof off, I'm actually going to have to go back here and um, get the skylight, the vent, and the sewer vent off back there in that corner because that whole that whole corner is rotten back there. So I'm going to have to get that off. And I know I got a soft spot here. I know I got one around the refrigerator vent. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to keep ripping, and snorting, and be back with uh, back with y'all in a little bit. All I'm doing is cutting this in strips, six, eight, ten inches wide or so. It is much easier to pull off of that luon if it's if you cut it in strips like this. If you try and pull it up, you know, in one piece, man, you'll you'll pull your guts out. <laughs> Trying to. Uh, Try and get that stuff off the roof. Okay, I got I got that much rubber off. This whole side, I don't know, till probably about right in there, back, it's all rotten. Um, the caps have been gone off the sewer vents, looks like for a long, long time. That's probably where, you know, because it started back there at that sewer cap, and that vent was probably leaking. I know the skylights, skylights always leak, so I know it leaked. Um, Huge leak here on this refrigerator vent. And I know we got a soft spot up in that corner. But, um, man, I'll tell you what, this uh, quarter inch Luon deck <laughs> that is not, you know, bonded to, uh, there's a lot of times when if you see quarter inch Luon as a, as a roof. Um, it's laminated with uh, styrofoam and uh, more luon inside and makes a really strong roof. But man, I'm telling you what, you absolutely, if you don't step on the, if you don't step on the rafters, <laughs> you're going to go through this thing. Uh, uh, quarter inch luon on 16 inch centers is, uh, it's pretty weak. So um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed to see that. I don't think anybody does that anymore. I hope not, because this is this ridiculous. I mean, nobody should be walking on this thing because <laughs> it just won't it won't support the weight. I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit heavier than I ought to be, uh, but still, yet yeah, man, I mean, it's uh, it's soft. So I just took the cap off this uh, refrigerator vent and uh, look here. See that big gap? See now that was kind of under the cover, so that's hard to see. But this you could clearly see. So this is all. See, there's nothing, no wood left under here. So, yeah, you got to inspect these roofs pretty thoroughly, folks. You know, at least once a year, minimum, to uh, so you can find this kind of stuff before before you have to do this. When you have to take something like this vent off, I always just use a flat screwdriver to dig the head of these screws out. And usually just like three sides, just to expose the screw. Uh, once you get the screw exposed, then 
Then you can get your, uh, for one, in this case, it's quarter inch hex head screws. So I use a quarter inch socket and get your screws out. Once we get all the screws out, then we just use our screwdriver to pry under it and pull it up. So yeah, I'm gonna finish getting the rest of these screws out. Well, I got most of the rubber off. I got most of the rotten wood out. This thing has dried for the last, um, I don't know what, four days. So it's nice and dry now. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna, wherever I tore the rotten wood out, I'm gonna go back with a, a saw and square everything up so I can start replacing uh, Luan. I'm gonna end up replacing probably, uh, uh, I don't know, like probably three sheets of Luan up here. So yeah, I'm gonna keep moving here and uh, probably end up just fast forward to some of this, but enjoy. So I got, you probably can't see, but I got a piece of Luan here that I lay down on this roof so that if I miss the truss by just a couple inches, I don't go through, I don't step through the roof. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not a bad idea to do. Cameron's gonna help me on Wednesday. I'm gonna wait for Cameron to help me get that air conditioner off the roof. So it's just gonna sit right there until uh, Cameron gets here on Wednesday. I'm gonna go get some half inch plywood to lay down on this thing because I really need to walk all over this thing right now. Cutting out this, you know, squaring up these holes and stuff. And man, I stepped on right on a truss up there a while ago and the truss started collapsing. It's like, holy crap. Cause these, uh, I'll show you something down here in a minute. It's kind of funny. Just let you know how, how RV manufacturers work. I mean, these trusses are clearly made out of galvanized steel, all right? You see that? Now let me show you something. It's right beside the entry door. Total surround aluminum structure, walls, floor, and roof. See the picture? There's no aluminum in the roof at all. It is, it's all steel. Walls, yep, probably. Floor, yep, probably. We know the front wall is low, but yeah. 
See, most people, I mean, who's gonna tear into their camper to see what's, how it's actually constructed? But right there, it's a lie. I went and got me some half inch plywood to lay on top of this thing to walk on. I don't know, I just don't feel like falling through a roof today. And yes, I know I'm heavier than I should be. These rotten places where I'm gonna replace the wood, all I'm gonna do is square these holes. Um, I got this one marked. And I'm gonna come up here 28 inches. And mark this again. Just like that, I've got my saw set at a quarter inch depth, so hopefully we won't even touch, won't even touch the trusses. That's the plan. We're gonna see here real quick. See how we did. Tell you what, they don't have they don't have very many screws in this either. Pretty uh, pretty tight with the screws. Oh, there's a piece of wood. Here's a wood truss. <laughs> yep, this is a wooden truss. I mean, I knew that these these I knew you know these are uh, what a RV manufacturer calls a one by three. I, I knew that was up in there, but here's a wooden truss. Still, there's no aluminum trusses. So now all we're gonna do is, uh, cause this, this dried up and it's still solid. So we're just gonna leave it. Whenever I'm patching on a roof like this, what I'll do is I'll come in here and put a two before under here. Just like one of these, probably one of these actually. And uh, I'll screw it in this truss screw it in this truss, screw the plywood on this side, screw the new plywood on this side, and that thing is nice and strong. Uh, it does a fantastic job. That'll be the strongest part of the whole roof right there. We'll put some insulation in there. Yeah, we'll be golden. So yep, yeah, we'll get that one ready to patch. Put the insulation in, patch it, and do this one here. Um, we do around the refrigerator vent and that back here is going to be big pieces um, I know that's going to be a half a sheet right there I may just go ahead and do another half sheet right there um, and then that's another half sheet back there on the back so that's a sheet and a half back here so I think that's what I'm going to do back here uh, rather than just trying to patch it I mean that's such a big area because it actually comes it actually comes all the way back up under this piece of plywood right here a little bit. So, so yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think that's what I'm gonna do there's, um, 
We're just going to cut, probably cut this out four by eight. And uh, that's probably what we'll do because that's, that's eight feet. That's perfect. Uh, so I'll just cut this off at four foot right here. Last sheet right there. I'll do my, I'll do my cross pieces for, you know, the, the joint right there. And then back there, you get a whole half a sheet across the back. And, uh, yeah, um, not going to make you sit through all that. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fire the camera up at some point. But for the most part, I'm just going to get this done, and then I'll show you the finished product. So like I said, I just put that tube four in there. We're going to screw it, screw it to this truss and screw it to this existing piece of plywood. Just use inch and five eighths screws to screw this down with. And that there will be the strongest part of this roof. Now, do you see this? Can you see this insulation here? This is what, about a eight inch gap there? And well, you got a little three inch piece of, of uh, insulation in there. <laughs> I got another really good one to show you on the back when we get back there. I will probably point it out to you. Put our insulation in there. It's insulated better than it was when we got here. And just screw a patch down. And uh, we're gonna vacuum this up and uh, we're gonna move on. This one will be done. Okay. I'm not going to video the screwing of this down because it's just putting screws in. So I'll be back with y'all in a little bit. Hey, I want to ask you, uh, those of you who have been with our channel for a while, what do you think of the name change? I don't know. I got, I got quite a bit of positive response uh, when I posted that video saying I was thinking about changing the name and actually uh, I got such, you know, such positive comments. I just went and changed it. It doesn't appear to have affected, you know, YouTube's algorithms and all that. So I think it's going to be a good move. <laughs> I think we can have some fun with it. I hope you all will have some fun with it. Um, I wanted to show you something here. Uh, this is probably one of the most prime examples of how campers work. You know, campers, any one component of a camper, major components, you know, wall, ceiling, floor, you know, by themselves are very light and very weak. But when you start putting them together, they make a strong unit. 
I know there's probably some of us that are in the industry that have worked on rotten campers and wonder, you know, how on earth did this thing stay together, you know, till it got to my facility? You know, why didn't it just fall to pieces on the road? Well, that's because, you know, campers really, every, every piece of a camper works together with another piece. And uh, I, I want to show you this. This is a, just a really good example. Um, oh, I want to show you something else too. There's another one of them aluminum trusses. I'm doing air quotes. Can you see? Doing air quotes. Uh, yeah. Does that look like aluminum to you or does it look like wood? These are all steel. I have not seen the first piece of aluminum in this roof. But anyhow, um, yeah, here we go. Um, this truss right here, this truss right here, the, uh, the screws have kind of pulled through on this piece of plywood on this side. Of course, I've already taken that side off. I'm going to put just a little bit of weight. Well, let me see here. Oh, here we go. Look, I'm just, I'm stepping on my plywood over here. You see how that, you see how that truss is flexing, bending? And I, I'm stepping back here on my plywood. I'm three inches from that joint. So, see, that truss is very weak. But, you know, it's attached to the interior ceiling panels. Once we get this other panel on here and get both these screwed down, that'll quit flexing sideways. And all of a sudden, it's getting stronger. Um, I thought another neat thing in this uh, roof, the little strips of uh, galvanize, they're not attached to anything. So I guess their thinking was that if they run those straps, so there's one over there, probably runs full length. And then there's this one, and it probably runs full length. I guess their thinking was that they might hit that with a screw occasionally, and, and there you go. It starts tying things together, it ties one truss to another truss. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, how, uh, that's how campers work. That's how they're built. Everything has to work together in unity and uh, to make a camper be able to go down the road, bouncing down the highways at high rates of speed and not fall apart. So uh, I thought this was a pretty good example. And yes, I know those ceiling panels look really bad, uh, especially right in there, but inside, they don't look bad at all. They're hardly even bubbled. So, I mean, literally, this camper is rotten a little bit everywhere. So, you know, in order to make this thing brand new, <laughs> what would it cost these people? $50,000 and they'd still have an old camper that's worth $3,000. So, you just gotta know when to stop and when to patch it and we can patch this thing up and they can use it for a lot of years and uh, they'll they'll get plenty of use out of it so and that's what they want to do they don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars to completely do a frame up re restoration on this thing so yeah that's that's so that's what we're gonna do um but i i just thought this was pretty neat so i uh, thought y'all might enjoy it all right got my insulation in it's all trimmed out. I got all my my two befores here to put the two pieces of plywood together with, and uh, gonna get ready to lay this piece of plywood down, screw it all down, whole bunch of screws, and uh, got to finish a little bit more insulation back there. And that little six-inch area across the back never had any insulation in it, so it's gonna have insulation on the way back. So. See, I always try and leave things better than I found them. Let's try to anyway. All my patches are done. So I got one gigantic one on that corner. This one around the refrigerator vent. And that one there failed because they didn't put a piece of wood in there. Uh, I got this one just in a random place. And of course, the front corner. Corners are always bad. So... Yep, 
I uh, got all, just say like, got all the patches done. I uh, got a lot of cleaning up to do. I got to vacuum all the uh, sawdust and all these little wood chips and everything off this roof. And then uh, tomorrow morning, first thing, me and Cameron is going to start uh, putting this all back together. Look who decided to show up today and help me. What are we doing today, Cameron? Putting a new roof on. Are we now? Yep. All right. At least that's the goal. That's the goal. We like goals. Look at that leaf. Got this thing all cleaned up, and there's a leaf out there. So. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Yes, today we are rolling glue, and we are rolling roof on, and we're using a broom to smooth it with. So, uh, yep, we're going to get started here. Uh, we're going to start in the middle. We're going to go both ways. So uh, we've already rolled the roof out, make sure it was square enough, and... Uh, so we're going to get started here, and uh, I'm just going to put you up on a tripod and let you watch. So here we go.
All right, we got the new rubber on it. Looks good. Camera's just going around and brooming it one more time. Just use a just use a soft bristle floor broom to uh, basically just kind of squeegee squeegee the air bubbles out. Yeah, uh, you can never get them all out. There's no way in the world. Uh, and all you can do is just get the major ones, and you just kind of hope the little ones will lay down eventually. So. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing this in the field, um, you know, you can't do it like you do in the factory. I mean, when they put this rubber on this thing, they vacuum seal it, and uh, you know, they get a they or they there should get a really good uh, adhesion that way. Uh, they don't always, but yeah, I mean, it would be a whole lot better to put the rubber on, you know, glue it and put the rubber on, and then put it in a big vacuum bag and suck it all down. So, what do you think, Cameron? Think it look good. Think it look good? I think it look good. All right, we're gonna uh, get this flapping taken care of. I already went around and stapled it, to keep it from actually coming loose. But uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do something here, and then we're gonna go get some lunch. Testing, testing. All right, rubber roof's on. Antenna's done. Uh, still got to put the air conditioner. One vent, refrigerator vents done, sewer vents, bathroom vent, skylight, back corners all sealed up. Oh, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's starting to get dark. So we are done for the day. Oh, got the radio antenna done too. So uh, yeah, I told you in the, from the get-go, this was not gonna be a step-by-step -step DIY type video. Because this is just a ton of work, and me and Cameron have not stopped today. We took one break today, and other than that, we've been working for all day. <laughs> so we're gonna quit for today, and uh, we'll be back later. This looks a little lumpy here and stuff places, but that'll settle down um, once uh, it gets some sun on it this summer. It'll them uh, them little lumps and stuff will go away. So. So there you have it. There's replacing a rubber roof on a camper. So uh, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'm gonna go down the road and fix another one, and y'all have a fantastic day.